So let's talk about protecting the sprint. We now know what our velocity is. If we know what our velocity is, let's say we have a backlog. Say like you're like unplanned in a backlog. Like you two are IT projects. Then we have like one that's a change request project. So let's say we have a backlog like this. We could even double this because most people have like hundreds of tickets in their backlog. Well, time to start like sprint planning time. Uh, we pointed all the tickets so we know what the points are. The product owner has come in and ordered the tickets in priority. And now we're all gonna come in together and negotiate what um, what's actually going to be done the sprint. As a team lead, I look at our adjusted velocity and I say, this is how many points of business value work we can add to the sprint. Um, usually, uh, especially early on, you get like eye rolls and you're like, well, yeah, but your velocity is 100. So we're just gonna fill it up to 100. It's like, no, we're not. This is once again, where that leader runs towards danger. Uh, we're not going to do 100 points. We're going to do 66. No more. Because we notice that we get a lot of waste added into the middle of the sprint. So we want to buffer in the case that that tickets get added on later. Product owner, you have add, you have ordered everything. So if we get done early, and we run out of things to do, we will pull in tickets from the backlog as a team and just like move from there. And it's like, okay, we do that. Again, this is a trust thing. So let's say we like, we have what, 66? So okay. how many, how many can we get done? So let's say we do like a 34, do this IT work. Do this change request. So that's 13. That's 47. Uh, can we do the 21? That would bring us to 68. No, nope, we can't. We're gonna do the 34. No, we can do this 13. So plus 13. 60, and there's no there's no smaller one. So okay, I guess we'll just bring these in. All right. Well, that's what we can do. Well, customer success who you know, was at Sprint um, Review says like, hey, we really, 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 really need you to work on this. Like, this is super, super important. It's like, okay, we'll pull this in. This is unplanned waste work. It comes out of the buffer even at the beginning. We just recognize like, hey, that's coming out of our buffer. Uh, now we start working on stuff, okay? So we do this, um, we go here. Uh, how many points do we have left? So we had uh, 64, I think, plus 21, that's 80, 85 or so. So we have 15 points that has a buffer in here now. Let's say 15 points, um, customer success set comes back and says like, hey, we just found a bug. It's really, really bad. We need to fix this now. So we say, oh, that's fine. We have room for that. Here we go. 13. Okay. No need to worry at all. We're still below our average velocity. So we're just going through. Goes to QA. It's QA. These two get started. Um, then like this starts getting deploying. Um, continuing to move on. And then... This is when customer success comes back again and says, hey guys, I'm really sorry, but a huge, huge problem again came in. We've got more unplanned work than normal now. Uh, it's just come in. We have to do this. 
we are now over the 100 uh, average velocity. At this point, because we've kept good metrics and because we know what on average the team can do, there is a rounding error to zero chance that this sprint will be completed successfully. In the Kanban uh, sort of world, um, I can't remember what the exact terms for it are, but there's a theory of how much work you can like juggle in your brain, like just knowing that the work is on your plate at the same time. There was a, there's actually a Kanban book that I have or I bought, that I borrowed um, that uh, describes this really well with a metaphor of like throwing food to a dog. Uh, so the author described it as uh, you take one treat and you throw it at your dog and the dog happily grabs it out of the air. Okay, the dog can handle one piece of work at a time easily. So then you take two pieces of treat, throw it in the air, the dog grabs both of them. Okay, the dog can handle two things at once. You throw three and a dog can handle all three at once. Although it's getting a little bit stressed out, but still can do it. Still can like stretch itself and get it done without any problem. Then you take four and the dog freezes, tries to grab something and all four land on the ground. That's what happens when we have too much work on the board is we'll like, it's not just that we don't get it done, is that we'll get less done because there's too much now on our plates and we start getting stressed out knowing that there's just too much to get done. When you know you can't complete the sprint, there's a lot less like, just it's just not less stuff will get done. So as soon as this happens, it's and on cord time. Pull the and on cord, pull in a product owner, pull in like, Whoever needs to be part of this meeting, essentially it's a, the sprint needs to be reset. Uh, and that almost always means saying, well, hey, we need to get this done. I guess that's not gonna get done. Pull it off the board. Now we're back underneath the 100 limit and we can continue moving forward. Again. So it becomes really, really important to be able to complete our sprints. But in order to complete the sprints, we have to be able to change what's on the board when it becomes, you know, when we understand it. The last thing about this, about like board work here, is sometimes when we get done like through here, we're like, oh, yeah, this 13 is actually more difficult. It's a 21. As soon as that change comes in, uh, you have to recalculate. And if you're over this limit, time to, uh, I pull and on cord full time again. Um, and then the points should not just be for doing only. It's the reason why I think that everyone who's doing anything should be part of like the, the refinement process where you point the tickets. Uh, the points are from ready to done. So QA, doing and deploying all together are what the point is. The point of doing the work, huh? So protecting a sprint is all about um, uh, preventing um, work that would increase the number of points on the board over the um, average velocity. Um, those tickets should either wait Till a future sprint or cause other tickets to be removed from the sprint. An alternate way we can think about this is um, hand limits. Like if we're playing, if we're playing a game of um, I don't remember what, what games like have. Does Magic have hand limits? I don't remember anymore. There's a lot of card games where there's a hand limit. And if you exceed that hand limit, 
at the end of your turn, you have to discard the extra cards. Even if they're all really super helpful and like would be amazing for you, uh, you you just gotta, you gotta do it. In this case, we're discarding it because we can't get them all played. We couldn't play them all, therefore discard down. This is, protecting the sprint is gonna be probably the most difficult as a team lead to do. Um, I've spent a lot of time communicating with other teams, with like uh, others in the company that like, no, I cannot do this. And I've even overheard rumors that like some other people think that sometimes I'm an asshole because I won't allow them to just like, well, Brooks won't let that ticket in. So I, I don't know if I'll be able to work on my ticket this sprint or not. Um, the, the thing is like, I will let it in, but that means something else has to go. And that's the, that's the thing is like, everyone wants their stuff to get done, but also like, okay, who gets to make that decision about what doesn't get done? That's gonna be the product owner. The product owner is gonna to have to make that, that call. And so like, I'm gonna work closely with the product owner to make sure 